Hey guys, welcome to a Tuesday live show. This has been kind of a weird day. Uh, I seem to keep saying that lately, which is kind of annoying. I'm getting wrapped up in my cord here. Um, so this is episode, our show number 50, 50, 51, 50, I think it's 50. And we're going to chat about uh, whenever you can't get your, uh, your ex out of your head and you want all of this to stop. That's what we'll talk about. But before I jump into that, I just want to say I am not a therapist. Uh, if you need help for your, for your uh, mental health, make sure you seek a professional. Uh, the information I provide here is just my own personal experiences, and I share with you to try to help you get your life back. If you can see and hear me, give me a one so I know that, the, <laughs> so I know that this is working. And then I'll go, once I go through all this other stuff, then I will... Uh, uh, give you some updates on what's going on. Um, I always like to mention, be very cautious of diagnosing diagnosing your ex with a mental disorder. The only people, thank you, I see all the ones. So the only people that can do that is a medical professional in a clinical environment. They actually have to be treating the person, and then they will follow their procedures and their modalities to determine what is really going on. So be very cautious of saying my ex is MPD or borderline. If you're talking to people privately, that's one thing, but be very careful whenever you're throwing those terms around uh, in other areas because it could blow up in your face. And if they want to uh, try to say that you are alienating them or stuff like that and you're throwing those terms around, it's very easy for them to torpedo you with that. So be very cautious of that. If you want to get a hold of me during the chat, make sure that you tag me. Do that by just hitting at the at sand at sign. I think you. I don't know if you can do it in in a, in a, a mobile device. I'm not entirely sure, but I know you can on desktop. Uh, or just put my name DSD or Dwayne, uh, so that I know that you're trying to get a hold of me. So it makes it easier for me to try to figure out whenever you guys are asking a question or trying to get my attention. Uh, especially whenever you guys are chatting amongst yourself, which is completely awesome. So if you are new, one of the one of the fifty four percent of the people who are watching videos that are not subscribed, please uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell notification, so that way you don't miss a thing. And also, YouTube only counts <laughs> subscribers for certain certain things, so subscribing is important. If you haven't signed up for the DST newsletter, which I didn't send one out today, you can do that over at dadsurvivingdivorce.com. Uh, when you first log in, oftentimes it will show, um, what do you call it, a, uh, a thing, but our dialogue to ask for it. Otherwise, just sign up over here. And I do not share your, your whatchamacallit, email or anything with anybody. It's just my list, and I email you guys directly. And if you get an email from me on that reply back, it is sent from my Dwayne at dadsfarmingdivorce.com and you'll get right to me. Speaking of that, if you want to try to get a hold of me, you can do that either by hitting the contact tab that will open up a, di a web form to send me an email, which goes directly to me, or you can click right here and it will open up in your email browser. All right. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris Johnson says, you mean I can't diagnose my ex? Exactly. That is exactly what I mean. Be very careful of that. Oh, that's funny. Oh, no. What did I just hit? I'm just turning off the wrong thing. Uh, oh, this is awesome. Shay says, I just use layman's terms to describe the X. Example, autom automaton. <laughs> nice. But yeah, actually, it's very, you're much better. Well, I mean, I know I'm joking on that, but you're better served if you use... Uh, Focus on the behaviors instead of the terms. I know it's kind of the same thing, but it it helps you because you are not. It you can start to lose your credibility when you start saying you know they're crazy or you know they're borderline or they have a mental disorder or whatever. So, ah. Gavin says, your channel is awesome. I pray it grows more and more. You're, uh, you're a blessing to many out there. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that, man. 
And uh, okay, so I uh, mentioned the newsletter. Oh, I do do coaching if you would like to book some time with me. And this, the time is running out that I will be available for the rest of the year. So, but you can do that over at the Dad's Surviving Divorce site um, and just click the coaching tab and that will take you to all of that. And, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and grab this one. Chris, before we jump in, everything says, uh, Dwayne, how long does it take, how long does a trial last when fighting for visitation? My attorney got witnesses, uh, which is my son's teacher. And, you know, normally it's a couple of days. It, it really depends. Uh, it might, could be just one day. It, 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 it depends on how much, uh, what you're bringing and what your ex is bringing in, uh, in to the trial, um, but it takes a while to get there, right? You're going to have your preliminary, you're going to have your initial temporary hearing, which you've already done, and then it'll roll into other other things until you get there, which, you know, just double check with your attorney on that, because I thought like this, the time that we were going to go to court, like the second time, which we ended up not doing, um, I thought that would be the trial. And it's like, oh no, that's just going to be a meeting. That's going to just be a hearing to decide whether what we're doing next. It's like a conference hearing. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm gonna have to pay somebody a thousand dollars just to pay another thousand dollars. It's very annoying. Okay. So I want to jump into, uh, tonight's topic. Um, and it's, a it's a, in response to a comment that I got from, uh, on another video. I don't remember what video it was. Let me see if this will pull up. And it was from, okay, let me, turn my email off so it doesn't overtake my screen first. Dang it. That's annoying. Let me start over because I'm going to cut this out. <laughs> Let me do it this way. <laughs> Color checker. <laughs> now I know what to look for. Okay. Today's topic is talking about how to get the other person out of your head and what happens whenever you just want to make, make this stuff stop. This uh, topic comes from a viewer who sent a note saying, uh, I've done well 15 months, no contact, but I just want him out of my head so I can have some peace. It's driving me mad. Please help. Uh, need some advice. And he here's the thing, and I can absolutely relate to this. What, what Debbie was saying in, in this comment, I, I was living that in the beginning part of this. I knew I wanted this stuff to stop. I knew I was tired of it. I had basically hit, and hit emotional rock bottom. I was going to therapy and everything was getting worse and it made no sense. Actually, to be honest, I think with what, it, what she was saying in her comment about it being 15 months, that's about where the time was. Actually, that's really weird, but that's about where I was at when things were really getting bad. And I tried, I'll, I'll talk a little bit and I'll talk about what I tried. Like I mentioned, I was going, uh, I was seeing a therapist. I was fortunate, to, fortunate enough to have a trauma therapist who was well versed in this stuff. And I didn't realize it. I didn't realize that was her specialty. Thank God it was because it made all the difference. She was phenomenal. I know I've talked about her before. And if you have, okay, here's the thing if you have a therapist and they're not phenomenal, find another one. It just are, are uh, find a coach or find something different, <clears throat> excuse me, something different, try teletherapy, whatever the hell it is, but make sure you surround yourself with the best people to help you through this. I, it, it's critical. It is absolutely critical. So I'm going to therapy at that time and I want this to be over. Just like, just like uh, Debbie was saying, I wanted, I, I wanted what well, she says him, but I wanted them out of my head. I wanted my peace. I didn't want to wake up every morning thinking about the situation and that person thinking about them throughout the entire freaking day and then going to bed with them on my mind as well. JS says time Time does play a role into it, but the problem with, with time without doing extra work, it, may, it, it starts a feedback loop that just makes things worse and worse and worse. And that's what was happening to me. I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I can't break free from this. 
It's just going on and on and on. <coughs> so what I did is when I was working with that therapist, I asked for homework. I said, what else do I need to do during the week to work on this? She gave me some books and some suggested reading. Uh, I think she even gave me some, you know, like mental exercises, you know, the normal stuff, journaling and stuff like that. And that still wasn't helping. And that's around the time whenever the, my therapist said, you know, you might be dealing with somebody who's not diagnosed, you know, caveats all the way around. I cannot, you know, she was saying, I cannot diagnose her. I've never seen her. I've never treated her. Uh, however, taking from what you said, it seems like you are experiencing the, the effects of being in a relationship and a long-term, you know, long-term abuse of somebody who has NPD, narcissist person, personality disorder, which is under the cluster B. I then went to the Google and I started searching about NPD and I found some videos. I mean, I, you know, there wasn't as many back then. Uh, I found Richard Grannon and uh, finally started finding some other books and information that helped. Even with that, I still couldn't get them out of my head. It was like this, it was just wasn't, it, it was helping, but it wasn't fixing it. I think ultimately what, what helped me, and this is what I would definitely recommend if, if Debbie happens to be watching this, hopefully we'll see this video either is on the live stream or we'll see it on a replay uh, when I post it, you know, in the next couple of days. I did a combination of things. I did what I was already just talking about. And uh, I actually, I had a friend of mine at work who was like, man, I mean, I, guys, I, I hope you realize, I mean, one, I hope you see that I'm, I'm doing really well. I'm, I'm, you know, very handsome and attractive now. <laughs> Got color in my face. <laughs> but I mean, in all seriousness, I was a total, a total wreck. I was spiraling out out of control. It was, it was really, really bad. A friend of mine said, man, you got to try something else because you know, you're like coming up on two years and you're still circling the same thing. You're not making, you know, you're not making progress and you need to get your life back. And they actually had recommended to me, uh, hypnosis. And I even actually talked to my therapist. I'm trying to move things around so I can see a little bit better. I even tried to talk to my therapist about that. And we were looking for, or I was looking for a local hypnosis that I could work with directly. Um, unfortunately, that was not uh, easy. If finding professionals is really tough. And what I ended up doing is I, I do, went to the internet again, you know, hypnosis, files, downloads. Um, and what I ended up finding that worked for me, let me see if I can pull this up. If you go, I actually have them listed. If you go to my website and you go to the resources tab, you, if it loads, cause every time I'm on a live stream, it loads really slow. Um, I list a bunch of stuff, but, uh, and I mean, and this stuff's all good. You know, Alchemist is a great book, all this different stuff, but right here, this hypnosis downloads, uh, uncommon, no uncommon knowledge. And it was these, these download files right here. Well, actually these four. Uh, mend your broken heart. Getting over divorce. That one I didn't use as much. Letting it go. Use that one a lot. Unrequited love. Use that one a lot too. And I would play these over and over and over again in the morning, in the evening, uh, when I could take a break at work, not while driving. That coupled with everything else started to work for me. So if you're one of the people that are just stuck on this, this might be something that would work for you. And if you try this and it doesn't work, then I would, I mean, I know, I mean, medication is a pain, but you know, I even was getting to the point where I'm like, okay, if this stuff doesn't work, then I will consider, excuse me, trying to find uh, meta, uh, medication that could potentially help because you owe it to yourself to find a path out of this. Um, I'd like to say that 15 months is way too long, but in reality, in my situation, you know, it was like 24 months, 
that I was just, it was getting really bad. I mean, it was getting to the point where I could barely function at work. I started missing uh, events. I, I remember there was a, uh, a graduation event I was supposed to go to for a friend of mine. And I had an, I, literally on the way to it, I had an emotional breakdown. And then I, en- I ended up driving past the graduation thing. And I drove to the Pacific, Pacific Coast uh, over by Malibu just to look at the ocean because I was a complete mess. The, the, the last thing, or the, the thing I do want to, I, I want to impress upon you, if you are in the early parts of this, is this takes a lot of time. This isn't something that you're going you're gonna to get out of this, realize that you're in a narcissistic, abusive relationship, and in a month you're going to feel like a million bucks, and you're going to have your life back, and everything is going to be great. Unfortunately, the, the type of abuse this is, the way, it, the way it manifests itself and how insidious it is, it makes it incredibly difficult to heal from and it takes a lot of time. So if, you are in, if you're in that situation where you're struggling with this and you're beating yourself up because like, in, like Debbie was saying in that comment, you know, I've done well for 15 months, but I just want him out of my head so I can have some kind of peace. It's driving me mad. That time frame isn't uncommon. And, and I want to, to, to stress that point because oftentimes what happens, at least this is the way it looked for me, is when I was at that 15-month, 18-month, 24-month part on this, and I'm like, I'm still thinking about this. I'm still stuck on this. I can't look at the reality of this and realize that I should be grateful for being away. I mean, I thought those things, but I didn't feel it, right? I didn't feel like, woohoo, I'm so lucky. Um, I just want to say that because that when you're, when you're struggling with that, it can really, really wear you down. So let me see. I'm going to grab some comments on, on what people are saying on this. If I can uh, get my comments to scroll down. Uh, oh, I like this. Chad says, I like Delta Wave sleep meditation. It helped me a lot. Yeah, I do that. I still do the binary beat things almost every night. When I go to bed, that's, I, either, I, either listen, <laughs> I either listen to one of my videos and my voice puts me to sleep. Uh, or I, um, I do do that. I don't, I I was talking to someone earlier, actually I was talking to Leslie earlier and I, and I think that I should probably go back to some of the hypnosis stuff just for some of the stress and everything that I'm, I'm dealing with. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. Let me see. Chad says it's been two years of limited, no contact for me. Nothing's changed. I just do what I can to keep her the heck away from me. Yeah. Uh, Lyle says, for me, reality changed. Uh, Jack says, five years here, doing way better, just the dreams, memories, and the odd triggers, but I bounce back way faster now. 100% six months, no contact. See, and I think Jack's mentioning a really great point here because it's not like everything goes away. I mean, even for me, there are still some times where some triggers will, will pop up, but the difference is now it's almost instantaneous that whenever those, those, those silly, well, I don't want to say silly thoughts, but whenever those triggering thoughts pop up, it's like immediately all the different stuff that I've learned throughout the years has helped. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is the other thing that really helped for me was uh, the absolute thinking and the black hole thinking which I still haven't moved the app, moved the absolute thinking. So in my mindset for narcissistic abuse recovery playlist, there's two key videos. I got to move the other one around. There's uh, absolute thinking, which I think is really important. It's an older video, but it, it's where you, you, you do say to yourself that they have, you know, it's like, let's say you don't have a diagnosis, but you like strongly suspect that they're borderline, that you say they are in fact 100% diagnosed borderline. That is what they have. Every time your brain says, Oh, but what about you go? Nope. They're borderline. 
you know, but they made me cheat. Nope. It's a manipulative, you know, and, and that's that part that, that helps whenever you're, you're dealing with this to reinforce, um, the reality, right? And if you don't do that, oftentimes what'll happen is, is you'll get caught up in that mode to where you start thinking, well, was it really that bad? Well, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's something different. Maybe this, maybe that. And it'll drive you insane. And it'll, it'll just rob you of your peace. So you absolutely do not want to do that. So the blue couch. Was that, was that where I was at? Was I on the blue couch, Lyle? That's pretty funny. Okay, on that, I'm going to wrap this part of it up so I can close this video out. Uh, if you uh, have some comments that helped you, put that in the comments uh, down below. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next video. Okay, so I can cut that out. Now I can go back through everything else. So the other thing I wanted to mention, just as a side note, I forgot to mention this at the beginning. Remember that sleep study that I said I was supposed to have tonight? So they called me and canceled it. So now I've been on the phone. That's why I was running a little bit late. I, I rescheduled it to Friday. So hopefully they can put me on the damn machine and figure that out. I saw some comments earlier when, we, when I was going through the other part about it, about how hopefully it'll help. And I am really looking forward to it because I am really getting tired of being tired and being, you know, not sleeping well. I tell you what, anybody who has sleep apnea that has one of those stupid machines, if it's working for you, can you give me a, a one, a one, thumbs up, something like that? And I'm going to look to see what else we have. Okay. Yeah, Schaefer Juan says to Chad, the ex used to keep me awake. He slept maybe four hours a night, if that. Uh, when he got up, that meant the entire house got awake. No consideration for anyone else. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think they do that. They, they do that to keep you worn down, right? I mean, so if you if they can keep you stressed and anxious, it makes it harder for you to have your 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 reasoning skills diminish as the as more as you get more tired, and it helps them maintain control. My my ex used to do that crap all the time. Oh, I like this. Uh, Bitten in Darkness, YouTube Gamers, <laughs> cool name, by the way, says, have you tried rain noises? You know, I have, um, and I don't like them as much as as just more, it, 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 if there's some of that uh, meditation type music, I appreciate that better. Uh, but I, if it has the rain in it, that's good. And it says that uh, you go on to say it helps me, it helps me with my depression and anxiety on PTSD. Let's see. Oh, Chad's right. It says, Chad says you can't track their behavior if you're too tired to manage your own. Absolutely. And Ann M, if I click on the right one, says, yes, that's what happens when you live with a narc. They get off on sleep deprivation. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, this, you, you got, the chats are coming in more to where it's like every time I go to click it, moves it. Ah. Uh, Shay, for, Shay says, uh, makes everyone else goofy and off balance. A house full of ditzy blondes all around you. There you go. Fan noises. That's a good one. Yeah, Debbie actually likes that. She has one of those noise makers that she uses. Um, Oh, this is interesting. Ann M says, uh, I think they can't stand when others are taking care of themselves, even sleep. It just, uh, Lyle says, uh, if you want rain, uh, if you want raining in New York City for three weeks, it's actually been raining around here. Normally it doesn't. I mean, it didn't, I think it did last night, so it was wet, but... Uh, um, Oh, sweet. See, this is what, I know this is off topic, but Chad says, my mom swears by her CPAP. Uh, she had the first uninterrupted night's sleep in her life. Her snoring has stopped too. I am so, I mean, I, you know, I, I watch the videos on it and it looks silly, but I think I'm to the point now where I'm so desperate to actually sleep that uh, I don't care. I mean, I'm like, I've, I'm ready to try it. So... 
I was really not happy when I got the, the voicemail earlier because I missed the original call that said, you know, hi, Dwayne, we're calling to tell you that your, your, your study has been canceled because they closed the office. I'm like, and, I, and the reason I picked that office in the first place was because it was the only one available. And it happened to be in the same town as my dad. So I figured, hey, you know, I can go over there and maybe I can meet him for breakfast in the morning. Um, but uh, yeah, so I wasn't thrilled, especially towards the end of the year. You know, my deductibles are all met. Um, I can, uh, you know, I mean, at least this appointment's not supposed to cost me anything. I'm like, great. Then it's going to be all turned back on. So I am. Lyle says, you're worried about looking silly when you're sleeping? Of course I am. <laughs> Actually, I'm more worried about, about it being colossally uncomfortable, to be honest. You know, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It still sounds like from what they said, it won't be until um, next. It's like they'll do this appointment, then they still have to freaking make up another report. So it sounds like I won't actually get anything until next year. So I'm a little bummed about that because I've been working on this for months. Months I've been working on this. So, oh, it's funny. Shane says, Darth. so when I was talking to the lady, I'm like, hey, so am I going to get my Darth Vader mask? And she started laughing. And she's like, you want a Darth Vader mask? I'm like, I'm just trying, I'm like entertaining myself. She goes, well, you made me laugh. So that was cool. <laughs> That's funny. At least you understood that then. Oh, man. It, it, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this one because I can relate to this one. Chris says, I asked for a new Xbox for Christmas. And my ex bought me a used PlayStation, among other worthless stuff, on holidays. Narc's manipulative, uh, manipulative, manipulative let you know that you are not... Let me say that again, because this is worth saying correctly. Narc's manipulatively let you know that you are not worth a thing. Oh my God, this right here. I lived this for 20 freaking years. You know, I actually got to the point towards, you know, like the last eight years of the marriage... I would buy myself my own Christmas presents because she would not, it would be trinket BS. It was, it was like, seriously, you know, I would go out of the way and do something that I thought was nice. Uh, back when I heard I actually had money and, uh, and then I'd get like, you know, Oh, look, I got this used coffee cup at the thrift store. Or something. It was just really annoying. Hey, Eddie knows. Haven't seen you in a while. Hopefully you are doing well. Oh, Chad says, I'm, I uh, joked with it. I was going to make it look like a face hugger. If you're talking about the one from Alien, I saw somebody do that. They, they, I saw that. I saw a picture of that. That was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, dear God. Okay. Yeah. Um, Chris says, uh, Exactly. So <laughs> back, I'm going to have to post this one too. Shane goes back when I had money. Yeah. Back in the day, back, back in the day of the, of the, of the bottomless checkbook. So it was weird. You know, I mean, it's just the amount of stupid crap that was bought. She would double, she would spend, she would double and triple buy things to where she would just give it away because she'd be like, oh, I went to the store and I bought this and now I have five of them because I didn't realize I already had five. Uh, it was really, really weird. Uh, Chad says, I didn't buy my own, pr uh, if I didn't buy my own presents, I wouldn't get anything or nothing after I spent six months hand building her a jewelry box, which she probably complained about would be my guess. <laughs> Mr. Skull says the used candy cane coffee cup is fantastic. Actually, I think I bought that at I think it's a Starbucks cup I bought last year. I bought last year specifically for the live streams. And I don't even know if I used it. So I pulled it out today. I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Skulls. I appreciate that. All right. Oh wow. We're not okay. Um, let's see. Speaking of coffee, if you'd like to support the channel and buy me a cup of coffee, you can do a super chat. Or you can become a patron on Patreon. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. 
Yeah, I figured this was going to, what she would say. So Chad says uh, she smashed it. Shma- How, why is that a hard word to say? She smashed it and left it in the house when she had to move out. Yeah. Yep. It's just, it's, yeah. Man. Remain Namesless says, yes, narcs love to spend other people's money. And they are. (laughs) And up until, I guess, you know, she does have a job now. That's something. So it was only eight years that that she spent money. Aw. Uh, Lucia, if I'm saying that right, thank you so very much for the super chat. I will definitely enjoy a nice coffee tomorrow. Thank you very much. Anyways, so I wonder if I could post that. What happens if I do this? Oh, that's cool. It highlights it over here. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, I can't... uh Uh-oh. Jaya says, I I can't see the live comments anymore. Uh, Jaya, if you can hear me, just refresh. Sometimes that'll happen. Just hit Command-R on Mac or F4? Control-R on PC? I'm not sure what it is on PC. But refresh it. Oh, neat. Okay, I'm going to say this. Uh, Chad says, oh, well, I fixed it back up. It's my daughter's now. I reclaimed it like I reclaimed my life. That is aw- Dude, that's cool. I love that. Well done, Chad. That is awesome, man. Good for you. F5 on PC. Thank you very much, Divorce Papa, for that. Our, our resident tech place, tech person on site. Um. Okay, so if people, I know some people posted some questions and stuff before, uh, which I think I missed. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find them, but if not, uh, post them now and I will hit them. I'm trying to scroll back. JS says, Dwayne, do you think it's possible to break free when you are still involved in litigation? JS, I think it makes it significantly harder when you're still in the court battle. I think it's possible. The problem is, is that you're going to have those reoccurring triggers that are constantly coming back up that are going to make it really tough. Um, I know when you're, God, I think you're coming up. I think you've been doing the litigation. I, am, I, am I correct in thinking it's like clear, close to three years? I'm not entirely sure. But it, it, the thing is, is that it, 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 is, it is possible but you really ha- you're going to really have to work hard on yourself and kind of accept the way they are, right? Um, and that's, it's, it's a lot easier said than done because every time you have to uh, go back to court, pay an attorney, when you're looking at the consequences of this, it's, it's really like pouring salt in an open wound. It's, it's, it, it's, possible, but it's really tough. Um, let me ask you this, JS, if you're still here, cause I know you asked that earlier, have you seen any improvements over the course of what you're doing or does it still seem the same to you? So that, that's a question I would ask you on how you're doing. Rick says, uh, Dwayne, how do you stay even keel when they are so up and down? I love you. I hate you after separating while co-parenting. I do not react to her negativity or provoking anymore, but I find myself, let me do this. I find myself uh, talking to her like today when the person and almost overindulging too much information when she's acting normal. Oh man, Rick, that's a tough one. You You have to, okay, so that's where that absolute thinking is incredibly important because you have to remind yourself that you're dealing with Satan. You know, they can act normal, they can put on a smile, but at the end of the day, don't lose sight of who they really are. Don't lose sight of of the nature of what they really are because they'll act, they'll have a nice, they'll have a good moment. They'll act quote unquote normal you'll go back to your normal behavior. You'll think, and I, and this is okay. So now I got caught in the same trap. You, um, you think that, oh, okay, now they're acting normal. Thank God. Finally, finally, they've realized that this is stupid and we don't need to do this anymore. 
and we can get normal, right? I fell into, Rick, what you're talking about, I fell into that trap multiple times myself, and every time I did, and Rick, I'll ask you this in case, you know, to see if it's happened to you, as soon as it like got back to where she thought it was a normal state, she'd take her finger and go, boop, right in my eye. And I'd be like, oh, ow, damn. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Anytime I open my eye, she's going to poke it out. So, yeah. Let's see here. Um, what I saw, where, where'd that go? Oh, CH says, what do you do for a living? I am a telecommunications uh, management person now. My background is in radio communications and radio electronic repair and software development. Um, I have... Uh, from my time in the military, I was an electronics technician that worked on air-to-ground radios. And as I promoted, I ran te- uh, an inside plant telephone shop, uh, small computer maintenance, repair, network, infrastructure, fiber optics, spectrum management, radio systems, land mobile radio, like emergency first responder stuff. And now I do uh, wireless systems for the place. I manage the wireless systems for the place that I work, which includes the radio systems and all the telemetry uh, not the equipment, but the the spectrum that's utilized for it. So that is a quick uh, resume, CH. I, I hope that's what you were looking for. <laughs> oh, and I do video and photography on the side. More video now. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to scroll down because I know that I asked a bunch of questions. And um, let's see. Okay. Okay, so back with what I was talking about with JS. JS says, I have become a lot stronger. It's the most difficult when our children get physically hurt, punished by my ex and their new supply. Yeah. See, and that's going to be the hard part. And and I'll tell you, even once it's over, when the ex would do stuff that really emotionally hurt the kids, she she never really did uh, physical things. It still, that still was very triggering. You know, I, now I think I'm just numb to it. So whenever something happens, um, it's annoying, but I don't, it doesn't affect me the way it used to affect me. Uh, but there was a period of time where I was like, well, okay, maybe I can, you know, what can I do to make it change? What can I, you know, how can I make it better? And then you just realize you're beating your head against the wall. And, and maybe I'm a defeatist. You know, maybe I just uh, didn't have enough money, but I could not, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't just keep doing it. Um, and you know, I mean, it was like, there was no recourse. I couldn't reason with her. I didn't have the money to go back to court. I was, you know, I mean, I was, I didn't have many options and I just finally had to say, you know what, there's nothing else I can do. I, I, I can't, I can't let it bother me because it was going to, it was destroying me. All right, let me see what's, what else is going on. Lucy, Lucia, I don't know if I'm saying that right. says, I'm curious, what job did your ex finally get? Uh, interesting question. Actually, she finally, after a couple of years into the divorce, decided to uh, go back to school to better herself. Went to community college, got a degree in, uh, in uh, to be a paralegal. Uh, no one would hire her as a paralegal. And she's now working, as I understand it, at a, as a secretary in a uh, exterminator place. So that's what I think. I don't know. I mean, it's not like she's telling me. That's just kind of what I've heard, uh, heard through, through, uh, uh, through, through the grapevine. Oh, you know what? Ann M says, uh, I want to just hit this because, um, he, <clears throat> Ann M says to JS that that is my last major trigger. The ex knows this because he can't hurt me. He hurts my kids to hurt me. Jerks. Guys, what that right there, you need to, okay, you need to expect this because as you grow from this, right, when you, when you stop responding to them, they're going to, they'll ramp it up to try to get you to respond. And then when you are no longer playing their little game, they inevitably start messing with the kids. And then the kids are telling you stuff 
And it's like, okay, so then what do you do, right? And, and, and your first instinct, and I'll ask this, everyone who's been through this, give me a one if you agree with this. Your first instinct is going to be to reach out slash lash out to them to say what the, you know, either to say it, uh, you know, this is wrong, stop it, or what the F are you doing? I did the same thing. It's just, it's an exercise in frustration. You're better off just hunkering down, you know, trying to soothe your kids as best you can when they're with you and uh, not take the bait on that too. Because in my opinion, it is absolutely bait to try to get you to respond. Now, JS, since you're still in litigation, you're in a different situation because I would bring the crap up. I mean, if she would have been doing some of that crap when we were still in litigation, I would have docked documented the the hell out of it and uh and then used it in the court filings the other thing i want to say is just okay completely off topic but just the annoyance of youtube and why i do you know ask for coffee donations and patreon support youtube is kicking my butt like on videos and live streams lately they're just like no no your your stuff is not is not appropriate we're not going to you know we're not going to monetize it and then when I asked for review, like, a, like the, the live stream the other day, the live stream the other day, what, mo- yesterday, they demonetized it. I said, hey, double check it. They looked at it and said, no, we've reviewed it. No monetization for you. You know, you, did, you violated our, our guidelines. We're not going to tell you what you did. We're not going to tell you what, where it happened, what you said, what the topic was. But no, thank you very much. No. So pretty, pretty. Eight six seven five three zero nine. That's pretty funny. Uh, that <laughs> the older people will probably understand what that is. So, anyways, yeah. Okay, so I got a question. Uh, ooh. Okay, a narcissism abuse survivor says my soon-to-be ex is on her third boyfriend partner. Bed, oh, bedbound partner, sorry. Another deputy in our county. That's just spectacular. I feel reluctant to file reports now. Uh, why do they gravitate obtaining these people? I feel in, uh, influence is used. Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, think about it. They're looking for people to be their white knight, um, and they're looking to intimidate you. And what better way to do that than to have you know their support group be police. Mine did the same thing, you know, and it freaked me out, man. I, I, a narcissist abuse survivor, what I will tell you when I, well, two parts, when I heard that, that it's like, oh my God, this cop is hanging around all the time. I'm like, oh great. Now I'm going to get, you know, freaking tased or pulled over all the time or profiled. Thank God that didn't happen in my, my situation would not surprise me if she, you know, slandered me. I mean, I am sure that if you ran into that cop, he would, t- he would probably tell you what a piece of garbage that I am, garbage human, and how horrible I am. And that guy's still ar- uh, kind of still around. I don't know. The kids say sometimes he comes by, sometimes he doesn't. I think personally, man, I think it's they try to find people that empower them to intimidate you. Um, now, feel reluctant to file reports. You know, I don't know. See, I don't, inst- I don't know exactly what you mean, uh, a narcissist abuse survivor, what do you mean by filing? I mean, are you talking about, you know, go taking her back to court? Honestly, you know, going back to court, or, I, I know a lot of people really are proponents of it. And, and I'll, okay, to full disclosure, if I had all my money and I wasn't giving it to her to where I, I could have built up a nest egg, I probably would have tried to crush her in family court. Um, the problem is, is I was financially ruined so I could barely, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm still on the boat now where I'm kind of like, Oh crap. That's like, like this, this go around. Cause I've had to, because of the rent increase and some things not working out like YouTube, um, I am not doing so great. Right. So it's like every time I'm rolling into the first of the month, I have to scrounge funds to keep from overdrafting. So, I mean, I don't have any money. I mean, that's like even right now, I don't have $3,000 to, to go back to court. I guess technically if I really, really had to, I could probably find it somewhere. 
sell some stuff. You know, I mean, there's things I could do, but it's just, it's one of those things where it's just not, I mean, it's, it's, I guess what I'm trying to say is at some point you have to decide whether it's still worth fighting. I remember I had a coaching client a few months ago who was fighting something. And then when I talked to him in another, another session, he was like, you know, I don't even know why I fought this. I mean, because really it wasn't that bad. I didn't really care. Now I'm dumping all this money and it's just this bottomless pit. And why did I do it? And that's why I say oftentimes you really have to think about, is it really worth fighting? You know, and, and it's a really tough one because I know for me personally, in the early part of this, the answer was an absolute yes. For me to, to walk away from certain things was just too much. It was too much for me to do. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stand to let her, you know, to think or let her think that she was winning. What ultimately happened when I was completely financially ruined, I was emotionally destroyed. I'm just like, you know what? I can spend the rest of my life trying to fight her, to try to hold her accountable, to try to get even, and it's going to hurt me. It's going to destroy me. You know, I, I made a video a while back and, and you, about that friend of mine. You guys, okay, I'll ask this question. You guys, give me a one if you remember the video I made about my, my friend at work who had the stroke. Uh, and you guys said, hey, what happened with him, whatever. So I spent, I've spent like a week, or like three weeks, I think, trying to get his phone number, ultimately trying to reach out to him. I finally got a text. I don't know if I got it from him. And the comment back was he was doing okay. He said he was doing good, but he has aspasia, uh, which means he can't communicate and he's in a senior assisted living facility. So, I mean, it's, you know, and I texted back like, oh, you know, well, I'm glad you're good. Good is good. Um, does that mean you can read? You know, I mean, cause I'm like, Hey, I'll, you know, I'll text you or, uh, you know, I am you or whatever. If, um, you can do that. And I haven't received anything back. So I, I, my gut feeling is, and I've heard rumors that, that he's not really even capable of managing his devices and other people are responding. So, um, the news is, I, I was hope, hoping that it would be better, but it wasn't. So a narcissist abuse survivor says to file police report since her deputy boyfriend is part of our community might get a hold of it. And I fear retribution for exposing them are bringing issues that X violated orders consistently. So, okay, here again, it goes back to, to, to what I was saying, right? Is it really, really worth it? Is it, is it worth it? For, for your P, I mean, and maybe the answer is yes, right? I mean, if, if, if she's making it to where you don't get to see, you know, you're not seeing your kids on your visitation um, or, you know, whatever the, the, I mean, if it's stuff like that, you have no choice and you have to fight it, right? Because you have to be able to, to, to see your kids. If it's just stuff, if it's, if, it depends on what the level is. For instance, right? I mean, I would say, you know, mine doesn't share any information, doesn't pay the bills, uh, I could take her, you know, I mean, she's violating a court order right now. She won't share any information from the school. She hasn't paid any uh, bills. Um, those are violations, you know, but I'm not, it's, you know, I'm not, it's not worth it to me. It's not worth it to, to, to dip my toe into the bog of eternal stench. Anybody who knows a movie reference, put that down below to, uh, to accomplish it. It's like, I, it's not worth the emotional cost to me. So, but again, it really depends on what's important to you. And, and the sad part about this is I've known a lot of people over the course of this channel that the answer is yes, it is important enough to do it. And they do it. And then something happens like the, you know, what you're talking about. And then they're like, I wish I would have never, I've, there've been people on the channel. So I, I took them back to court for X, Y, Z. I wish I wouldn't have done it. It's been a nightmare and it's cost me more financially and emotionally than it was ever worth. And you got to remember that narcissistic personality types enjoy and thrive in chaos. It's like a pig in mud. They like to roll around in mud. So getting in and rolling around in mud with them and fighting with them, well, that's their happy place. 
So you're not causing, you know, you're not causing them any pain. I mean, I guess effectively what you would, what the best way to do it would be to pull them out of the mud and not let them play in the mud, right? That's what drives them crazy. So let me know what you think about that, a narcissism abuse survivor. Oh, Shay, the ones were for um, my, if anyone remember the video I did with my friend. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> MFA. <laughs> Smell bad. Ludo. Ludo not like this bog of eternal stench. Actually, I don't know if he says that, but that's pretty funny. Uh Let's see. Okay, so I am seeing if a narcissist abuse survivor is responded, which I don't see that they have. Shane says, uh, my ex is such an animal that she hired the lawyer her best friend's ex-husband hired for their divorce because they had... Good success against her friend. Uh, then she lied to her friend about it. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. That does not surprise me at all. Very annoying. Oh, I've heard of this too. Um, Shay says to Chad, I saw that on Tracy's channel, Tracy Malone's channel, for calling um, all attorneys in your area to keep the spouse from getting a local attorney. Yeah, I've, actually, I had a friend of mine who said to do that. You know, it's like, go do a go do a $100 consult with all the top attorneys um, because then they, you know, then they've consulted on the case, so it's a conflict of interest for them to be hired. Uh, you know, it... I don't know if I would recommend doing that. I can see that. I, can, I mean, I can see the, the benefit of doing that. But you got you to gotta really ask yourself, what, how far do you want to go down the rabbit hole and how far do you want to get away from yourself, right? You know, and, and I think it's a, it's a slippery slope to losing yourself. And it's easy to get caught up in this to where you go down that rabbit hole and you start doing things that are really against your core nature and not something that, uh, um, that you, know, you really would have ever considered doing ever before. Okay. Uh, C. King says, I do it with a public defender or legal aid, even if you're not eligible. I'm not sure if you're saying that to someone else, because in family court, you're not eligible. Unless you're getting ready to lose your kids and they're being taken away from you, you're not eligible for that type of support. It's really annoying. Shay says, I didn't want to do that calling attorneys. Well, we both needed one, so why go to the trouble? He had an attorney I knew he'd use anyway. Yeah, and I would say if you're doing that, just find somebody local so they understand the local system. They, they have a relationship with the judges and stuff. Because um, uh, I made a mistake initially and I didn't do that. And, uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Just kind of, you know, strap in, put your helmet on, you know, put your, your, uh, your helmet on, hunker down into the foxhole, and wait for the barrage of mortars to come your way. Oh, C. King says, says in my state you are. Well, that's awesome. What state are you in, C. King? Um, all right. Debbie says, uh, true, a slippery slope, so tough. You have to be vigilant. That's very true. And yet, if you play too dirty, 
then how do you show you are different than them? That's a good point. Plus, I think a lot of it goes into karma too, right? I mean, you, you, you start doing nasty stuff and it just, it, it's going to start backfiring on you. Honestly, that was one of the big things that kept me from doing, oh, I, <laughs> oh, I wanted to do some things. <laughs> yeah, I really did. And I was just like, you know, it's just wrong. It's not the person I want to be. And I felt that it would definitely bring, you know, bad things my way. Okay, so uh, a narcissism abuse survivor says, it puts me in a rock and a hard place having a tough call since I'm in a small town. My kids share that they're being punished for 10 minutes in the bathroom with the doors locked. Yeah, I wouldn't push that one because that's that isn't illegal. That's, I mean, as far as I know, that's not necessarily considered abuse. Um, you know, dunking their head in the bathtub, you know, for until they stop blowing bubbles that would be something. But the problem with that narcissism is abuse survivor. You're even if you took that to court, in my opinion, they're going to, they'll look at it and go, what? They're putting them a timeout in, in the bathroom and you're complaining about that. Why? You know, how do you discipline the kids? Right. You got to really be seeing that's the thing. You have to really be careful on, on your responses on stuff. And, and I, I, dude, I, I hear you on that because um, it, uh, it, I mean, it's tough, you know, there's things that you're like, Oh my God, I can't believe they're doing this, but you really have to look at it and on, on what the issue is. Like I, well, there's another person on here. Okay. So as a difference, right. Another person who might still be on the live stream right now has shared that their ex was physically restraining them to a chair. That's a little bit different. You know, that's, that's, that's starting to get a little bizarre. Lock, one, I don't know. How the hell do you lock somebody in a bathroom? Isn't the lock on the inside? I don't, I don't know. Um, so you got to just be careful about it, right? I mean, it's like, okay, what exactly is it? So here, here's my threshold on this. Is it something that you would call law enforcement? Would you call, pick up the phone and call 911 and say, oh my God, my kids are in danger. I need to do something about it. Uh, part two, I made a promise that the ex doesn't find out that they told me it's hard. Uh, this broke me down. Yeah, I, it's on that, man. I, I, whoa, wrong way. Um, I would be very cautious about, you know, dying on your sword, falling on your sword for that. Now, maybe there's more into it that you're not sharing, but just from cursory, from reading what you're saying, I, you know, I mean, it, but it, it's a, it's a, it's tough, right? But here's the thing. If, and this goes for everybody, if you, uh, if you pick the wrong thing to fight on, you can ultimately destroy your own credibility. And you know, I mean, it's, it's a tough one. As far as I know, putting someone in timeout for 10 minutes, actually, I think that's the preferred way for discipline, right? You know, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, whenever I would like, you know, you're grounded, go to your room. You know, I mean, it's along the same lines. So I know that's probably not what you want to hear, uh, a narcissist abuse survivor, but you, but we all have to be very, aware of the details of our situation. If, if you don't have something that, and, and here's the other thing is it's a lot of times in family court, when you bring something up, they're going to look at it and they're going to take it that you're blowing it out of proportion. So it better be catastrophic. I mean, there are people who've been on the channel who had young children who couldn't communicate, but they were convinced that the other parent sexually abused them went down that road, but since there wasn't any physical evidence to really prove it, it was completely thrown out. And now, you know, you look like, you know, you made the crap up. <clears throat> Excuse me.
All right. Shane says, Pandora's box. Absolutely true. That is a very good point. Um, okay, I'll post this. Uh, JB says, uh, yikes, ex uh, excuse, excuse two. And my last comment, there's not an acceptable level of playing dirty. Being strong and vigilant should not involve that. Good point. Um, oh, I thought I put that on the screen. Oh, well. JS says, Dwayne, I think what is so hard is that if we were in a normal marriage and someone did that to our children, we would defend our children. The problem with family court is they argue parents' rights. Yeah, and, and, and you're right, right? I mean, if you're in a relationship and someone does something or they, they cross a line that you're not, you know, like, well, okay, let's say, you know, let's say one person's into spanking, the other person's not. They, you know, they go and they start spanking the kids. The other person can say, hey, wait a minute. You know, but as soon as you go get into a divorce situation, you really, I mean, unless it's, unless it falls under like le, real criminal abuse, you're really in a tough spot. You're really in a tough spot. But see, that's part of the problem with, with uh, divorces. As soon as you separate, what they do, you have very limited recourse on. And the same thing, whatever you decide to do, they have, I mean, okay, so you hear about people who, you know, oh my God, they're being too abused, you know, they're being too controlled, too put down on or whatever, but it's not anything that bubbles up to a point that uh, um, is, uh, is, a, is, is a problem, right? And it's just, it, it makes it really tough. Lee Comstock says spanking is not okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know, I'm going to post this one on here. Here's the other thing. If you're in a divorce situation and you think spanking is okay, and maybe it is okay in your state, like legally or whatever, don't do it. <laughs> Come up with something else. Use the timeout method, you know, ground, whatever. Don't do it. Cause you'll, I will guarantee you that if you're dealing with somebody who's toxic well, even if you're not, I mean, it's just like, it's too much of a risk. Do not, do not do it. I don't know if I communicated that well enough, but hopefully that point was made. Oh, and JS, uh, JS had said, and not children's rights and safety. Well, the problem is, is, is a lot of times it's like, well, you know, what is um, their rights and safety, right? I mean, it's like, it, it's, it's subjective. And as soon as you get a court involved, then you, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a mess, you know, not even taking into account all the extra potential problems. I and mean, if you guys have watched the show or I was watching part of it again the other day, divorce corp and just the potential for corruption is just catastrophic. You know, I mean, it's, it's not good. Chad says most States have corporal punishment standard, as long as it's with, uh, within that, they, wait a minute, as long, oh yeah, as long as it's within that, they won't care. You know, guess how I know, because probably he, yeah, I'll just say this, you know, guess how I know. Okay, you know what, Chad, since you brought that up, I'm going to ask, I would imagine that you, they did something that you didn't like or vice versa, and it went, you know, and you, you, somebody, either you or the other person, you know, did it wrong. Nikki says, I think spanking is lazy. Yeah, I would agree. I, I, I would think, you know, I mean, I, I grew up on corporal punishment. Um, I think in some ways, this whole thing in, in my situation, by, by having to be the good and the bad cop, has made me a better parent uh, overall. JS says, strapping someone to a chair is never okay. I would agree with you on that one. Uh, that, that, seem that seems sick that seems not right <laughs> so all right let me scroll up a little bit chad says i checked with c well why didn't that pop up yet i can't put that on the screen i see it in a different one there it is chad says i checked with child protective services you know what I'm curious on that one because I think calling child protective services is dangerous. But if you, when you have a question, 
reaching out to, to get some clarification is not a bad idea. So, interesting. A narcissist abuse, a narcissist abuse survivor says, uh, thank you, stirring the pot isn't my cup of tea. X is high-functioning clo uh, closet alcoholic and refuses to undergo random testing as per court orders. With a cop on her side, it makes me second guess. Um... Hmm. Mm. Well, I would say, okay, so if she's not doing that and refuses to undergo random testing as per court orders, I think pushing that one <clears throat> might, Anna, might be a narcissist abuse survivor, might be an option, right? So don't go through all the other stuff, you know, don't, you know, really target what you're going to hit, right? And if that's one of the things where it's like, okay, you know, the court order says you're supposed to do this random testing. You're not, you know, you haven't done it. You go back to court for that to push that. And you would go back and say, look, I hope to God that it's going to come out. This was put in there just as a protective measure. I don't want to be a jerk about it, but it needs to happen. Um, I mean, that's an option. It, it just, man, it just depends. You know, if you, I mean, do you have the question is, do you have the money to keep going back to court for, to, to push those things? And if you do, what does your attorney recommend you do? Hmm. Stand by one. Let me see what no connection. Who in the world's at my door? Nobody's at my door. Okay, I must have got a package. It looks like Brown is leaving. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, okay. I apologize on that. Okay, I'm not going to get into a discussion on parenting style, so let's be careful on that. Uh, so on that, we are over an hour, which I normally don't like to do that. But uh, I am going to wrap this up. Um, I think I might be able to another live stream next Tuesday, and then that will probably be it for the rest of the year. Um, and... Uh, Let's see. So hopefully I'll catch you on Tuesday. If you're still watching this, uh, or if you're watching this in the replay, and you have some suggestions for future topics, please put them in the comments below. I'm going to use those for if I do another live stream as a potential topic, and I will use that over the course of the break whenever um, I can't record here to uh, go out on, on remote, solo remotes, break away from everybody for a couple of minutes, go record something so that I can still keep, uh, keep putting some stuff out there. Hopefully you guys are doing all right. I think we had a really good discussion tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.